How's it going everybody? Time for another weekly blog post. We're starting with our usual thing and checking out the ones that we've missed since last week. A couple of days ago we got some more changes to the Hunter Guild. The new crossbow is a 4 tick weapon, but will be 3 tick on rapid. They've changed its ranged accuracy, and they changed the strength of the bolts, as well as how many bolts you'll make by 2. The spears will actually be useful in the skill itself, increasing your teasing success by 5%. And if you use the spears to reset chinchampas, it will not cost any of your ammo. And there was also... Another Forestry Part 2 change. To sum it up, the two-handed axes will no longer use run energy. They are now going to be based on the Forester's rations. You will be using one ration for every successful chop you get, which is whenever you receive a log. And if you have rations on you, you'll have a 20% chance to get more experience, as well as a 20% chance to not get a log. They're automatically consumed, so as long as you have them in your kit, they'll be usable. And if you don't have any rations, your two-handed axe will act just as a normal axe. The rations are now going to be the use for the leaves from forestry. Each level gives a different amount of rations, and the level of the fish or the cooked meat that you use will multiply the rations made from the leaves. I want to talk more about forestry whenever part 2 is finally released, so we'll touch more on all of this later. Now on for today's actual update. The Scar Essence Mine is now in the game after being conceptualized a month ago. Not a bad turnaround. So to use it, you need partial completion of Desert Treasure 2, mainly just the beginning to start it to get into the Abyss, the runecraft level for the runes you want to make, and level 66 mining with a pickaxe. It's found within the Scar. As you enter into the Abyssal area, it's just to the right past the Stepping Stone, and we get to see our handy graph again. We've covered this before, but basically you mine the Essence, deposit it into the Extractor, and if you're looking to get pure Essence, you just pull that out for free. Or if you want the Extracts, you have to go to choose which type you want, pay your money, and then it gives it to you. And before I see people again talking that this is going to inflate the market with runes and cause rune prices to tank even further, or any variant of that argument, the GP per extract makes that not entirely worth it, and the only ones that really are are for the warp extracts, which already give the runes that are dirt cheap anyway. Otherwise, using the Abyssal Extractor is double the price of the runes that you are intending to make, basically. So those that think that we can use the Scar Essence Mine to get rich, it's the opposite. This is gonna make you broke. Again, this seems like an update geared toward late-game Ironmen that need a lot of blood runes to upkeep their weapons, and that they have plenty of GP not really to spend it on too much of anything, so instead of hopping worlds spending GP in the shops, they're now actually intending for you to make use of the game's mechanics and the runecraft skill to actually get your blood runes now for Ironmen. It's an intent to get rid of Shopscape by making you actually play the game. The main reason that I'm actually enjoying this, even if I don't intend to use the content, is because they're expanding on the Desert Treasure 2 areas. Rather than just having it be a place you run through once, or to repeat the bosses, the Abyssal Scar now actually has another reason to go to it. Moving on, we have our other changes to the game today. More pull 80 changes, including you can open the skill guide anywhere. I did check this in-game, it is currently only the skill guide. I would like to see this expanded over into the quest guides and the achievements and everything like that as well. You can change between the classic style and the new style in the settings menu. You can now shoot over certain tree stumps around Falador, Varrock, and in pest control, as well as the pest control towers can actually be used for snipers. A bug fix for certain player owned house dungeons to where even though it was multi-way combat, it was not multi-way combat. The teleport delay that was introduced into the wilderness boss layers now only applies if you recently have attacked them. Dead Man World PK skulls are now only going to be 5 minutes long. An opponent's combat level no longer affects durations. And if you're a permanent Dead Man player, you'll now get a PK skull if you attack any skulled player. And the settings now have a new option for the beta worlds where you can reset the saved game that you use, either converting your current save to the beta worlds, or just click to reset the save. And they're currently working on new changes for the permanent Dead Man world, including removing XP loss on death and XP multiplier for quest rewards. Trailblazer Reloaded's home teleport animation has changed. The original looked a bit too similar to the one awarded through Quest Speedrun, so here's the new one. Not bad. 
Apparently they conceptualized this during Trailblazer, the initial run, and they changed it over to their travel theme that they used instead. So since this is Trailblazer 2, why not bring it back? It isn't another running off into the Horizon animation, so it'll give us some more visual diversity within the game too, for people that do use these cosmetics. Not bad at all. Moving ahead, they're asking for feedback on the shooting stars. Glad to see everybody's enjoying the latest update, however the main thing they're seeing now, and the main complaint that I can actually agree with, their so popular worlds are now experiencing unexpected lag because of the amount of players that are logging into them. They also give us a graph that you can actually see it to where when the star drops it slowly increased the lag of each of the ticks in the game, maintaining a 200 to 250 tick rate throughout the star, and then once the star leaves, everybody drops off and it goes back down to normal. Thank you for sharing this graph with us by the way, Jagex. These are always appreciated to see. Their solution to this is basically creating star worlds. Identical stars of the same tier and location will fall on all of them, thereby encouraging players to spread between them. Some people prefer the big stars and some people prefer the small stars, so they want to implement two sets of star worlds, one for big and one for small. The main problem they're seeing with this right now is since they would be identical stars that would land and deplete at the same time, it would be harder to jump to another star immediately, which is what I think the best part of this update to the shooting stars was. It's no longer a sporadic event, you can actually continuously keep mining as long as you keep hunting them down. And the other problem is if they all land in the same space, some players might not be able to access those areas and would have to wait for the next set. So the main part of the update that I like is the fact that you can continuously mine the shooting stars now if you're trying to. So it sounds like doing the Star Worlds would ruin this. I think keep it as having the Star Worlds so people that are doing PVM know not to get onto them, but just don't have them land at the same time in the same locations across them. Still have like two or three big star and two or three small star worlds, but each one is different so people can get to the ones that they need to. And if you're doing high intensity stuff and don't want to deal with the lag, just don't go on to one of those six worlds. Sounds like a plan. They want to work with us to know how to solve this problem, so if you have any strong feelings, click the link here to be able to cast your opinions. As always, I'll leave the link to all of these blog posts in the description. The merch store has the skill cape key rings back in stock. PvP world rotations, feel free to pause for a moment if you want to look them over. And that's pretty much everything that we've missed over the last week. Leave your own opinions and feedback in the comments below and let's get a discussion going. Especially about the shooting stars and how to fix the world problems, I would love to have a chat about that. But otherwise, that's gonna do it for me. Hope you have a good rest of your day, you guys.